This video revisits the idea of quadratic equations in preparation for defining one of the simplest nonlinear functions, the quadratic functions. Essentially, a quadratic equation is one that's formed out of a quadratic expression. Uh, it's, a, it's an equation which involves only uh, terms which are constants, constant multiples of a variable, and constant multiples of the same variable squared, and combinations of those that are added or subtracted from each other. Generally, we'll say that quadratics take this kind of form here, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, where a, b, and c are constants, and x is the variable. And importantly, we, we note that a cannot be equal to zero, because if it was, we'd no longer have a squared term, and the equation would be linear rather than quadratic. Also of interest is that quadratics are actually second degree polynomials. Let's just have a look at classifying some quadratic equations. Out of these five examples given here, let's have a look at which of those are quadratics. Give yourself a moment now to try that yourself. Okay, remember that the general form for a quadratic is some number times x squared plus some number, or some other number, sorry, times x plus another number c equal to zero. So we're looking for that sort of relationship here. Part A, fits that exactly with a equal to 2, b equal to minus 5, and c equal to 11. So yes, a is a quadratic. In part b, it's a little bit distracting, we've got here y squared minus 7. Well, here where we've got the x, remember that we don't really need to always use x as our variable. Any other uh, variable is quite okay. So y is okay as well. In fact, what we've got here in part b is a quadratic in the variable y. So we might just emphasize that. And the variable can basically be anything that you want. So we have a squared term and a constant term. It doesn't matter that we don't have a bx, or in this case it'd be a by term. We don't need that term to make the quadratic. Part C. Part C is a linear equation. I, hopefully you can recognize that. We've got some multiple of x added to a constant. So that's a linear equation, and that is not a quadratic. There's an, uh, a missing squared term. In part D, we've got 2 on 3x squared. That is a quadratic as well. It doesn't matter that we have no constant term or bx term. All we need is that x squared term, really. And that is there. It's equal to 0, so that one's OK. Part E, however, where we have 7 divided by 2x squared together, 2x squared on the bottom. This one's not a quadratic, and that's because if you remember from your index laws, x to the uh, x to the 2 is actually x to the minus 2. So we've actually got there 7 on 2, x to the minus 2 equal to 0, and that doesn't fit our quadratic form. We don't have any x squared term, and we have this term which is nonlinear. So let's move things on a little bit and look at solving quadratic equations. We already know about solving linear equations, things like uh, ax plus b equal to zero. We rearrange those to get x equal to minus b on a. But unlike linear equations, for quadratics, we can't just simply rearrange and isolate the unknown to solve for it. We can't really do this kind of operation here. Two possible methods, though, that do come up to solve quadratics are listed here. And the first of them is to factorise the quadratic, something which we've covered in a previous video. If you can't remember that, you might want to go and check out factoring trinomials or factoring quadratics. Another method is to use the quadratic formula. What we'll be focusing on here is method one, and in another video we'll be looking at quadratic formula. So another uh, way that quadratic equations are unlike linear equations you might notice down here we only ever got one solution for our linear equation, quadratics can actually have different solution behavior. Depending on what the values of a, b, and c are in ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, depending on the values of those constants, we might end up with no solutions at all, that is no x values that can make the equation true, one solution, a single x value that makes it true, or possibly, in some cases, two real valued solutions to that equation. So let's look at that first method, solving a quadratic through factorization. 
the first method um, needs us to remember how to factorize a quadratic in the first place. So if you can't remember that, make sure you refresh your memory on it uh, before going on. We also need to know a little, little something here, a b equal to zero, implying that either a is zero, b is zero, or both a and b are zero. Uh, sometimes we refer to that as the null factor law. The only way that we can get a times b to be equal to zero is if one of a and b is zero, or they both are. We'll be using that, along with factorizing quadratics, to solve quadratic equations. The other thing that you'll need to remember is to be able to solve linear equations. That forms part of it as well. So here's the process. First thing we want to do is make sure that we've written our quadratic in the correct general form ax squared plus bx plus c. Some of the examples you'll see, it's written in a different form and we need to rearrange it so that it looks like that. That's so that we can properly factorize. Next up, we factorize the expression on the left-hand side. So that's going back to our quadratic factorization from previous work. Then what we'll end up with is two linear factors. Remember that when you factorize a quadratic, you get two linear factors multiplied together. Well, if we have two linear factors multiplied together and our equation says they're equal to zero, we go to the null factor law, which says that we can set each of those linear factors to zero and solve for the unknown, x. Finally, as you know, we should always be checking our solutions. Let's check out some examples. If you like and you're feeling confident, pause the video and have a go at these yourselves, uh, then come back and see how we go. Otherwise, you can follow along with me. In the first, video, uh, first example, we've got x squared minus 11x equal to zero. Now note that this is not one that you have to go through the full trinomial factorization method. We've got two terms on the left and they both already have a common factor of x. So we can write that as x outside of x minus 11 is equal to zero. At this stage, we've got our equation in the form of uh, two uh, factors on the left, x and x minus 11, and they're multiplied together and they must equal to zero. So the null factor law then tells us that either x is equal to zero or x minus 11 is equal to zero or both. So generally what we do here is say that the, the solutions to our quadratic are taken from solving these two equations, one of them's already solved, x equal to zero and rearranging the second, x equal to 11. So the solutions of our quadratic are x equals zero and x equals 11. Now if you want, and you should, take those back, substitute into the equation and check that it's true. So for example, x equals zero, Square it, we still have zero. 11 multiplied by it, still zero. Subtract, and we've checked it out, and it all looks good. You might want to check x equal to 11 yourself. In the second example, we've got x squared plus x equal to two. Now that is not already in the correct form. We're gonna to need to rearrange it. Because we've got an equals two on the right-hand side, which we need to get rid of, we're gonna move that to the left through subtraction. So x squared plus x equal to two will become x squared plus x minus two is equal to zero. Now we need the factor pairs which are going to give us minus two. So we could have factor pairs of minus one and two, one and minus two. And I think that's pretty much it. We need to choose the factor pair, which will add to give us the coefficient of x, which is a little invisible one there. Minus one and two, that'll add to give one. One and minus two adds to give minus one. So I'm gonna go with these here. Putting that all together, we can factorize to get x minus one and x plus two equal to zero, giving us our two uh, linear factors, x minus one and x plus two. So we set x minus one equal to zero and x plus two equal to zero. And we find the solutions of our quadratic by solving those two linear equations. And in this case, it's simply 
x equals to 1 from the first and x equal to minus 2 from the second. And I'm fairly sure that those factor back in, uh, sorry, substitute back in correctly, but I encourage you to go back and check them, substituting the x values back. Now, if you got a bit lost here in the factorizing section, make sure you go check out the factorizing trinomials or quadratics uh, video. Okay, to summarize this video, we've reintroduced the idea of a quadratic and formed a quadratic equation. And we also saw how to use factorization and the null factor law to solve quadratic equations.